I put every single altered history nation I could think of on the same map and let AI do its thing. I have included a ton of easter eggs. If you can find them, type them in the comments. There's a lot of them. Do I regret making this video considering how bad the AI is and that I will constantly just yell to myself how I hate what the AI is doing? Yes, absolutely. Will it be fun regardless? Yeah, it will. We got ourselves quite a few nations, even in Europe. We got ourselves a united Scandinavia. We got ourselves an Imperial Federation, which owns a lot. The Imperial Federation is quite big, and I think they are like easily the biggest contender for winning this whole match. But will they really win it? It's a good question. But we also got ourselves a united German Empire, a Danube Confederation, Yugoslavia, Greater Rome, the Byzantine Empire, Armenia, the Sassanids, a Zoroastrian Sassanid Empire, the Arab League, Greater Israel, Surely putting them right between the Arab League isn't gonna have any unforeseen consequences. The French Empire stretching all the way to Africa. Mali. The African Union. A lot more of the British Empire. An Indian People's Republic. The Mughal Empire. The Greater Turkestan Empire. The Soviet Union, because why not? The Mongol Empire. A Japanese Empire. The Republic of China a united North America, as well as a united Central America. I actually left South America uncolonized, as well as the Caribbean and a few other places, just so the AI can still like expand and other nations also have a chance. In the end, we want to keep it interesting. You don't want to know who's going to win right from the start, because we obviously have a clear favorite here, which is the Imperial Confederation, owning basically half the globe. We got ourselves the Imperial Federation is number one. The United States of America with a very weird flag. Don't don't question it, please. The French Empire. The Soviet Union. Under Captain General Joseph Stalin. The German Empire. The Republic of China. The African Union. And the Indian People's Republic on the 8th spot for great powers. Will it stay like this? I don't know. Will the Byzantine Empire, which I'm sure is like a favorite of a lot of people here, actually be able to do something? Why do we have a country called the Greater Roman Empire, which looks more like Italy from Hearts of Iron 4? I'm not sure. And what is a Borlot Empire? Is there any actual reason why I added it in? Except because it's funny because it is the least developed province in Romania. It's funny to imagine it is the one that united Romania. No, not at all. It isn't. There's no reason for it. But yeah, we just got to let AI do its thing. And let's see what is going to happen in the next 100 years. The first 100 years have already passed. And it seems like in Europe, not a lot has changed. Israel is kind of couldn't hold itself. I was kind of worried. I thought it would be like interesting if we had like next to Catholic, Orthodox and Sunni, if we had like another religion sitting here. I gave them like pretty strong ideas, but it seems like they in the end, they were just too small as a country to actually like stop the Arab League. That's actually kind of sad. I, I thought it would have been very interesting. However, when we come to Europe itself, it seems it doesn't seem like that much has happened. But Poland has lost a war against Germany, which made them release a bunch of land over in the south. And that land was annexed by the Greater Borlot Empire. I didn't expect them to expand. And for some reason, Germany has also decided to just annex half of Austria. Well, uh, I guess that happens. Italy has taken a part of the Balkans and is seemingly expanding into Byzantium and Yugoslavia, out of all places. And who's in charge of? Okay. Well, not that much has happened, however, in Europe. If you look into Asia, the Soviet Union has attacked Turkestan. The Sassanid Empire has attacked Turkestan. And I actually think that China also has... Yeah, China also attacked Turkestan. No, they didn't, but the Mongol Empire actually also attacked Turkestan. However, China has conquered all of Korea, and Japan has become Japan, but still holds on to Manchuria. So, that's gonna be interesting how Japan will hold itself. And the Indian People's Republic has expanded all the way into Bengal. Nothing at all has happened in Africa. I guess the nations are pretty big. I think that is preventing them from going to war with each other. And obviously France protecting its colonial possessions. France is a very strong deterrent against anyone else attacking them. And Mali, Mali is allied to Al-Andalus and the Arab League. 
No one is gonna attack them either, but they can't go against France either. Like, that's the only option they have, but they simply can't. So I guess Africa is in a stalemate unless one of those great powers start to falter for some reason, especially the European ones. Not a lot is happening in South America. However, Britain and the United States are going to war. It seems like the United States are losing. Britain, however, is like very, very strong, especially right at the start. They are still number one, France is number two. Not that much actually has changed, so... Except that there's already like early colonies in the Caribbean, so that's interesting. But not that much has actually changed in the general scheme of things. My like, countries haven't disappeared, even Switzerland is still around. And they are allied with the Imperial Federation, the Danube Federation, and they are guaranteed by France. I, I don't think anyone is gonna attack them in that current diplomatic situation. I wonder if they actually survived the whole match. It, it starts to look like they will. Even like Poland has barely lost anything. Like this is not a lot of land. Not that much seems to have happened at all. So let's see what happens in the next one. Huh? Yes, maybe more will happen the further we go in. Okay, so it's 1644 now. Things have happened in Europe. Germany seems to have split up the Danube Confederation basically between itself and Poland. Poland has reclaimed the land they lost. Borlot is not looking that hot. Byzantium has conquered a bunch of land there. But Byzantium has lost like a lot of land. Like Bulgaria is gone, but Byzantium lost that much to Italy. And it seems like Italy might be going on to conquer all of them because Italy is like a lot stronger than Byzantium is. France has basically done nothing except colonize South America. Mali hasn't moved, Africa hasn't moved at all, like nothing is going on in Africa, nothing is happening there. Neither is something going on in Western Europe that is all stable, and the Soviet Union has lost a war to the Sassanid Empire, out of all people. China is expanding into Japan itself, no, Japan has lost a part of its mainland, and I don't think Japan will be holding itself a lot longer. Like, they've been repeatedly been attacked by China, so that's not going very healthy. Otherwise, India hasn't changed a lot. Um, North America has basically stabilized between the United States and Britain. Like, that's pretty stable. Scandinavia has taken Reykjavik, so they now own Iceland. Um, yeah, not, not that much has actually changed otherwise. All countries are rather strong. Like, all of them. They all have massive armies already. The Arab League has 300,000. Germany has almost 400,000. Soviet Union has 400,000. France has almost half a million. Like, all those armies are massive. And I I don't want to imagine how slow the game is going to go in the end game. I think everyone will have, like, massive armies. Like, that's the thing. When we look at the great powers, basically not that much has changed. Like, they have shuffled in the rank, but it's still the same powers. Like Britain is number one, France is number two, the US is number three. Not that much has changed, but all of those countries, like, they're not that far apart, especially the great powers. They're all basically at the same strength. Well, Italy, those kind of like surprising how strong they are. Like, they're expanding a lot. I didn't think that Byzantium would be doing that bad, but who knows? Maybe they'll be able to stabilize. And the Soviet Union also has lost against the Sassanids, which is like a very big surprise. But we'll see how it goes on. It's like only half the game. There's like still a lot of time. It is 1747 now, and there's actually a lot of surprises now. First, Yugoslavia managed to conquer basically all of Hungary. And even though they lost land to Italy, they're like very, very strong, like... They can hold themselves. They allied to France, Poland, and the Soviet Union, which is a very strong alliance. A part of Switzerland? Germany has taken a part of Switzerland. Switzerland is like barely alive at this point, even though... Oh, they lost all their allies as well. Switzerland has no more allies. They are gone. Otherwise, Europe looks pretty normal. However, the big surprise is in Asia, because a lot has happened in Asia. Great Turkestan is kind of clinging on to life somehow. The Sassad Empire is like consolidating the steps, and Delhi has basically defeated the Indian People's Republic. So we have a very strong Delhi up here. Divyat has actually also like stabilized down here and like conquered a lot of land. They are like a random contender, which is cool. 
The European powers are colonizing slowly Southeast Asia, it's a race between Britain and France. And Japan. Japan actually manages to hold off China on their mainland now. I guess it's like the benefit of them being an island because China can't bring all the troops over and for some reason China keeps going to war over conquering Bungo, which is on mainland Japan. So that is kind of not working out for them. That's like really not working out for them. Although Japan has basically lost all of Manchuria and is now split between the Soviet Union and China. Africa still... In Africa still nothing has happened whatsoever. South America is... Yeah, the, the United States are just... They have a million soldiers already. And they just conquered basically the whole continent. Like it's all USA. I guess they are very, very much going strong. We also have already a economic hegemon and a military hegemon. And Britain actually beforehand was a naval hegemon. So the United States is like slowly crawling its way up to number one great power. But same with the United States. The other great powers are like still very far away from Britain. Britain is like still holding itself at spot number one. Even if it might be barely. But they have a huge navy. So that's like really good for them. But yeah, Europe has actually stabilized. That is like a big surprise like. I was expecting Byzantium to fall. They didn't. They are holding against Italy. And Italy has become the center of revolution. So, like, that's the thing. Because there are so few Catholic countries, the... The Protestant Reformation only happened, like, 50 years ago. It only happened 50 years ago, so... That's the thing. And everything just happened within 10 years, because, like, we already had, like, a lot of manufacturers in Europe. We had, like... A lot of um we had a lot of manufacturers in Europe and everything just happened once or the other. So there was no real Protestant Reformation. Protestantism basically doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is Anglican and Britain. But that's like the only thing that exists at this point. And obviously Zoroastrian Persia. Zoroastrian Persia is a thing that exists and it's very big. And it keeps expanding, which is interesting. I guess the Sassanids are having their comeback in this uh, in this scenario. And both the Soviet Union, France and the United States have massive militaries. Like, it's no competition. Like, all other nations that are significantly smaller in military. Like, even Italy that doesn't look so small has only 300,000 troops. And the Soviet Union has 700,000 under their Captain General Fedor Dukovsky. And the African Union also has 650,000 troops. But it's still not over, and most things normally happen like towards the end. I think there's gonna be a lot of wars towards the end. So we reached the end of the game, and you might think now, well, not that much has changed, right? Like, it looks pretty normal. I mean, maybe the Soviet Union is strong, and then we look at Italy. Oh my god, where did Italy go? Italy disappeared. And Byzantium now just conquered all of it. Byzantium is not like the dominant power down here. And you might say, wait, the British Empire is around. They are surely number one. No. No, they're not. If you look at the dynasty map mode, it turns out the Merkel dynasty has taken over Britain. And now the German Empire rules what's left of the British Empire. And that's the thing. The British Empire basically within 10 years completely collapsed. Like the British Empire is basically gone. Even Australia is independent. Australia is independent and allied with the United States. They are not a part of the British Empire anymore. The Sassanid Empire is at war right now, but the game is over, so we kind of got to stop here. But yeah, Yugoslavia got pretty big. Italy basically collapsed, and in Africa, the African Union was able to take advantage of the British Empire collapsing, but the French Empire is still around, somewhat. And the United States has basically conquered all of the New World, like the vast majority of it. It's no contest anymore. Like, there's like some small independent states, maybe some colonies, but like this is what's left of the British East Indies, uh, the British West Indies. Like that's all that's left at this point. Yeah, the, the colonies are gone. Like colonization is over, it's goodbye. And um, yeah, otherwise Delhi has conquered basically all of India, at least the northern part, and the southern part somehow was still held by Britain, although almost half of their, like it looked worse earlier, but it looks a lot better now. They kind of managed to consolidate again, but they basically lost half of their Indian possessions. And I think it all has to do with the fact that at a point, the UK had not a single coastline down in Africa. Like, this was landlocked. They just conquered this, basically. Italy split into a million pieces. So I guess the big winners of this campaign actually are Germany, which has just spread its culture across the map. 
and France, which managed to inherit Poland. And obviously Yugoslavia under the Macron dynasty, which managed to conquer Hungary, which is very impressive. Pretty surprising. I didn't expect to see Yugoslavia winning. And I didn't expect the British Empire to simply disappear that quickly. And Byzantium having such a comeback is very impressive as well. Like, they're conquering right now the Sassanids together with everyone else. So, yeah, this is like pretty impressive, honestly. And this is the actual great power list right now. The United States has become number one. The French Empire is number two. Germany number three. China number four. And Byzantium has actually overtaken the Soviet Union. That is very impressive. But, yeah, not a lot has changed. It's just the order of things. And Britain has completely disappeared. Anyway... That is all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. What has surprised you the most about this outcome? The thing that has surprised me the most is that a lot of the smaller nations actually managed to survive. I didn't expect that. If you want to play this yourself and try it out, just DM me on Discord. I will send you the save game so you can play it yourself. It's just a save game. If you want to support the channel, however, or support me, I also link my Patreon down in the video description. So go check that out. Anyway, I hope to see you guys next time. 